What's your goal, Ms. Jackie? Give me like the next 12 months, next year. Okay, perfect. Let's stick with that number then. Excellent. Awesome. And what product do you sell? Okay. Excellent. And let's just use a average number, okay, and say that when you're selling life, health, Medicare, what's an average premium or commission that we can use? You want to use like 500 bucks just as a good example or you want to use something different? Okay, so let's use an average of $500 per cell. I know a lot of, some of you have seen this on our YouTube. Some of you have seen this similar thing at some of our live training events. But for those that haven't, that are new, this is how you build a plan, okay? $100,000 divided by 500 bucks is 200, yep, it's quick math, okay, 200 cells is what you need based on this, and I'm not, I'm not going to get into carriers or products or commission, none of that, okay, we're just going to use this as an example, you can use your specific example later on, okay, when you're building your own plan, 200 cells, I'm going to take that and divide it by 50 weeks. Okay, what do we get? Yep. So you end up with four. I gave you two weeks off for vacation. Who likes vacation? Okay, you're welcome. Four cells a week is what it comes down to. So. How do we break that down a little further? Especially for new agents, we teach a triple S system. Set, sit, and sell. In this example, it was Jackie, right? Jackie would need to set 12 appointments every single week consistently end up sitting with about two-thirds of those, which equals eight, and end up with about four cells a week. Now, Jackie, can you set 12 appointments a week? Okay. Most agents, that's where they struggle. Everybody always wants to talk about, okay, you know, what do I say? I'm worried about products. I'm worried about the presentation. You know, I'm worried about the clothes, and I'm worried about all these other things. Agents fail for one reason. What is that? I learned that quick as a new agent. It's a numbers game. If I sat with, if I sat with at least 10 people a week my first year, I made a couple grand a week. When I didn't, I struggled. So if it's an hour to uh, ability to just literally walk up, Aaron, and say, okay, I'm booking 12 appointments this week, then why aren't we all doing that? Maybe it's prospecting. Maybe you don't know what to do. Maybe some of us are, you know, door knocking, cold calling, buying leads, working with a marketing agency, warm market, referrals, networking. I don't know what to do, so I don't, don't do anything. You know, who knows, right? Which happens. Jackie, give me a few, uh, what's your main prospecting avenue, you think? Or what is it going to be? Okay, referral groups. Some leads, okay. How about how many leads a week? Five, about five a week, okay. And thank you for sharing. I'm not picking on you. This is going to be. This is. Hopefully, this will help. This is a perfect example, though. So thank you. What else? And how many? If you had to grab a conservative, consistent number of the amount of people you sit with in a week now, what would you say? Yep, okay, good. Sit with six, that's not bad. You're sitting with 
more than most agents, especially being brand new, that's awesome. Okay, so what else can we do? And are you setting six or sitting with six? Okay. Good, good. It means you're probably great at building relationships, good with people, good personality, social, right? Okay. When you sit with six, are you making about three sales? Less, more, two to three, okay. Now we're gonna talk about a lot of other ways to make this a reality, but in this example, anything else you wanna add? Oh wow, that's awesome. You're sitting with more people than most agents that say they're working 90 hours a week. When we know they're really not, huh? Okay. I mean, we said we'd keep it real, right? Okay. Two to three sales a week. So how do we get you? Because if you're at two to three, okay, then you're closing about 33 to 50%, which in this case, to get to four every single week consistently, you need to be sitting with, actually sitting with eight to 12. 12 at 33% close, eight at a 50% close. How do we get you another two to six sits every single week consistently? And, and if you only have 20 hours, it probably is. Yeah, good, 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 awesome. Thank you very much for sharing. Give it up for Jackie. I believe that every insurance agent in here can earn $100,000. If you already earn $100K, I believe you can make earn two hundred fifty. dollars If you're already earning two hundred fifty, dollars Pete, I believe you can earn a half a million. If you're already earning a half a million, dude, I, can, I believe you can go to seven figures. If you're earning seven figures, I believe you can go to eight figures in this business. I just do. That's what I believe. And I know it's available. There's more what in our industry than anybody else? Okay. With this, it's all about building a plan. A lot of new agents struggle. They're like, I don't know what to do. The biggest thing that we struggle with is consistency. We'll have good weeks, Eric, and then not so good weeks. Right? So it's all about building a plan and putting in specific prospecting strategies to sit with whatever you need to sit with every week to make sales. You don't want to put so much pressure on yourself that you have to close every single deal. Because when you, because when you have to make the sale and you're like, oh my gosh, this is my only point in a week, I gotta make it, I gotta make it, I gotta make it. You can't throw a beach ball in the ocean, right? You put pressure on yourself, it becomes harder to sell, okay? Who believes, wait, who believes that you can earn $100,000 as a new agent right now? I believe you can too. I totally believe. And that's what we're going to spend a few days getting you to, right? You're already a part of the 8% because you're here. You're thinking bigger. You're committed. I've always loved going to stuff like this. I do leave challenged and motivated, but I leave thinking bigger. And I always pick up a nugget or two. Everyone should leave with a few nuggets. 100%. You should leave with a couple tangible things that you can implement in your business right away, okay? So I'm going to jump into a couple little training tips really quick. I used these when we went to our insurance, our free insurance trainings. Who, 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 who's at our uh, free live trainings, our little two-hour events, 15 cities? Awesome. Thank you, guys. Who heard about us because of those events? Wow. Awesome. That's right, Mr. Braun. Okay, I'm going to jump into some specific training tips that we shared there that can help any insurance agent with some sales tips when they're out sitting with people. All right, you ready? Yeah. Are you sure you're ready? Yeah. This is an insurance conference, right? I'm not hitting your, I'm, we're not sitting in a meeting, I'm trying to sell you insurance, all right? Okay. <laughs> One of the first things is always assume that you will make the sale. I know that it's 
tedious and small. That's the first of the three cell steps. I've made cells that I didn't think I was going to make. Right, Spike? I made cells that when we've started the presentation, they're like, I'm not buying today. Right? Who's ever had that happen? I just want to quote. I ain't doing nothing. I'm shopping, man. Right? Wonderful. We're going to shop together, right? So when I assumed the entire time that I was going to make the sale, I had a better chance of making it. A lot of us struggle with confidence. If you're not, I, you, 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 you know what I believe about when a sale is made? I believe that when I am more confident that I'm going to make the sale, then the prospect is that I'm not going to. That's when I make sales. If they are more confident that they're not going to buy than you are that they will, they ain't going to. It's confidence. It's you. It's taking you to another level. It's thinking bigger. It's skilling up. It's role playing. It's practicing. Whatever you got to do to assume You'll make the sale every single time. Say assume with me. Assume. Second tip. After assume, you'll make the sale. And we're going to talk about phones and objections tomorrow in the morning. I always finish with a question. 100% of the time. It's kind of weird. My salespeople on the inside sales team here think it's you know, a little odd. Takes a little getting used to. But I'm on the phone. In an appointment, I always finish with a question. Took a little training, but it keeps you in control. And when they're giving you objections and you're finishing with questions, Eric, it works, don't it, man? That's the second tip. Always finish with a question. Cody, I'm not interested. Perfect. Thank you for sharing that. Hey, it's just my job to drop off the information. It's, it's totally up to you with what you do with it, right? So should we sit down together? I'll be there Friday. Is morning or afternoon better for you? Who thinks that would work? You've probably seen on some live dial videos. It works, okay? Say ask with me. Third sales tip. This is probably my favorite. Use hypotheticals. It's a little new, a little unique. Who's heard me talk about this one? Okay, a few, a lot that haven't. Good. Here's an example. When I ask my wife, I don't know where she's at, but when I ask my wife, babe, what do you want to eat for dinner? What do you think she says? Whatever you want. I don't know, not sure. Let me think about it, yes. Yeah. If you had to choose, babe, where would you say? When you take someone to a hypothetical place, they are more likely to answer a question. For instance, I was in Joplin, Missouri on an appointment years ago, training a new agent, sitting there on an appointment, and I didn't ask the question correctly. Who believes there's ways to ask questions to get the answer you want, and there's bad ways to ask questions? Yeah. If you didn't know that, start thinking about the way you're wording stuff and asking questions. Because there are not so good ways to ask it to get not so good answers. I was in Joplin, Missouri, and I asked the gentleman, wasn't even the best way to ask it. I said, hey, sir, do you know where your policy is? What do you think he said? I don't know, right? And I said something that made no sense at all. But it worked. So who cares, right? I said, if you knew where it was, where would it be? <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> right? It's ridiculous. And I'm like, why did I just say that? And he said, well, if I knew where it was, it'd be in that filing cabinet right over there. Okay, we're getting somewhere. He's sitting across the room in the, uh, in the couch. I'm sitting over here across the room. I'm like, this filing cabinet? Yeah, that one. Okay, can I open it? Sure. Open it up. Guess what's sitting on top? His policy. But what did he say 30 seconds before? 
I don't know. It's human nature to say stuff like I don't know and no, even when we know the answer. I do it all the time. Someone will say, hey, do you know where this goes? And I'm like, ah, I don't know. And then about 10 seconds later, I'm like, why did I say that? I know the answer. It's just lazy. Prospects are the same way. I love using hypotheticals. Take them to a hypothetical place. There's something about hypotheticals that gets an actual answer to what you want. I don't care what it is. Using a hypothetical, people answer hypothetical questions, right? Where do you want to go on vacation? I don't know. Well, if you could be anywhere, where would you love to be, right? Hawaii, Australia, right? Use hypotheticals to get answers to your questions. Okay?